The runecrafting minigame Guardians of the Rift just recently came out and has completely shifted the entire runecrafting skill. The rewards from the minigame have dramatically buffed any essence using runecrafting method. ZMI, lavas or muds, regular runes, making those methods now solid GP and XP. This minigame is decently intensive, but provides a very solid 60 to 75k XP an hour and around 1 mil GP an hour, which isn't too shabby at all either. For requirements, Guardian's mandatory requirements are really low. Just 27 runecrafting and completion of the Temple of the Eye quest, which only takes about 20 minutes. 56 agility is extremely useful for mining more essence early on, and runecrafting levels will boost your rates at each altar unlocked. 44, 54, 65, and 77 respectively. Mining level does not affect this minigame whatsoever, but being able to use a better pickaxe does. Crystal pickaxe does work here and will quickly burn through charges. You also really need NPC contact for repairing your pouches and guardians, so lunar diplomacy is a soft requirement. Before I get into the minigame, I want to talk about the main useful rewards. Usually I leave rewards for the end of the guide, but in this case the rewards dictate how guardians is played and are the main reason you come here. Reward points can be used to claim roles from the rewards guardian outside. The first and most important reward at 1 out of 300 searches is the Abyssal Needle, which can be used to stitch all of your pouches together into a colossal pouch, which holds the combined amount of all the original pouches plus an additional 10 essence for 40 total. You can also still reclaim and use the small pouch by talking to the Dark Mage if you want. This pouch requires 85 runecrafting to use, but dramatically improves all aspects of runecrafting for both GP, XP, and ease of use. The next useful reward at 1 out of 700, this is likely going to become more common later, is the Abyssal Lantern, which when lit with logs gives a benefit within the minigame. The Redwood Log buff is most useful probably, requiring 90 fire making, which prevents pouches from degrading and provides 5% more runes and reward points from the minigame. Next are the Robes of the Eye runecrafting outfit, which you can purchase with Abyssal Pearls from the Wizard here for various amounts. It takes a very long time to get this outfit from the minigame, roughly 850 rolls on average to get the entire set. I could see them changing this to be cheaper in the future. Each piece of the outfit provides plus 10% runes crafted, with the entire outfit providing a total of plus 60%. There is a quirk in the minigame that makes this outfit end games much faster for the same XP and points, making it extremely useful for both profit and farming the minigame. I will talk about the other rewards at the end of the video, but these I just discussed are very important to the minigame itself. For gear, this is going to change after getting aforementioned rewards. Just bring all of your runecrafting pouches. Optionally bank the small pouch if you want to click less. A chisel and rune pouch with NPC contact runes, which is astral, air, cosmic. Bring your absolute best pickaxe and any Varrock armor piece. Prospectors, if you have it as well, will benefit you a little bit. If you're using a crystal pickaxe, you will want a crystal signet ring to reduce charges used. Because, oh boy, do you ever go through charges here. It is worth using here if you have one, but costs a good amount to use, around 50 charges per game. A mining cape is minorly beneficial for its chance to give additional essence. Not 100% certain this works here. Runecrafting cape, if you have it, is better for preventing pouch degradation until you get lantern. Obviously, a max cape is the best choice if you happen to have that. You do not need graceful here whatsoever, so wear whatever fashion you want. Feeding the main guardian stones gives run energy. Once you have some rune multiplier rewards, which is two or three outfit pieces and or the lantern, that's roughly when I would start doing this. Start bringing a binding necklace and wear a tome of fire, bringing earth and water runes loosely in the inventory. This will allow you to make combination runes, which greatly increases the speed of the games with some multipliers. To get to guardians, head to the basement of the wizard's tower. Easiest way to get there is either necklace of passage or fairy ring code DIS. You can also simply use minigame teleport to go directly there. To begin a game here, enter through the large magic gate. There is a bank chest nearby. The main goal of this game is to craft runes at the various altars using mined guardian essence. Crafting runes provides guardian stones, which can be given to the central guardian to charge up his energy. When the energy reaches 100%, the game is won, and you will receive rewards. This doubles as the guardian's health bar, and will lower if he is damaged. The guardian will constantly be under attack by abyssal creatures, which must be fended off by crafting Rift Guardians with energy cells you charge at runecrafting altars, and charging various shields to protect the Guardian with the same said cells. Fragments, which are used for crafting Guardian Essence for the minigame, can be mined from loose Guardian piles around the area, but the large Guardians to the east, down the shortcut, provide an extra fragment per action. One fragment is equal to one Essence, but is stackable. Roughly every two minutes a portable spawn, 
Anytime after 110 on the plugin, the portal is able to spawn, which can take you to the West Cliff, allowing you to mine huge guardians for guardian essence directly instead of fragments. Far faster. It will remain for a bit after the game, allowing you to teleport to the cliff and wait there until the next game. This gives you a big head start in the next game and is very beneficial if it works out this way. Fragments can be taken to the workbench in the southwest to create guardian essence. You'll be spending a majority of the games here. After crafting a full inventory of essence, you can take it to one of the runecrafting totems to make runes. There are 12 central runecrafting totems which take you to their respective actual runecrafting altar. Make sure you wave hi to the sweat lords with runners at lavas when you pass by. Two of these totems are lit up every 20 seconds, allowing access. These always include an elemental and catalytic altar, respectively. Crafting essence at any of these altars will give runes and a base amount of either catalytic or elemental stones, depending on the altar used, as well as charging an uncharged cell into a powered cell related to the tier of altar used. Stones are used to charge the main guardian. Cells are used to create guardians or charge shields. Elemental altars are as basic as it gets. Air provides the weakest and fire provides the most powerful cell. For the catalytic altar, body and mine are weak, cosmic and chaos are medium, nature and law are strong, and death and blood are overcharged. These cells can be used to either create guardians or repair slash upgrade shields. The guardian created's power is directly correlated to the tier of cell used to create it. Their max hit and HP increasing based on the tier. Overcharged guardians are extremely powerful compared to anything else. There is a cap on how many guardians can be created at once, this is 2 in a solo, and it increases by 2 for each additional player up to a total of 10 guardians. Shields can only be upgraded to the next tier regardless of cell, shown by the light you place the cell in. Overcharged will increase a weak cell to medium, or strong to overcharged, just as an example. If a cell is the same or lower tier, it's going to simply heal the shield, which is more for a higher tier. Upgrading a shield increases its maximum health, and increases its current health to half of the next tier's max HP. A cell does not necessarily need essence in order to be charged. You can enter an altar without essence and simply charge a cell if you need to. If a shield is destroyed, to add a cell to get it back up, you must repair the shield using 10 guardian essence. So try to avoid that happening if possible. Sometimes when crafting at an altar, you will receive a talisman. These allow you to consume the talisman and enter that altar again, even if it is inactive. The talisman isn't consumed if the altar is active. These are incredibly useful from higher level altars. Abyssal creatures spawn in waves from the rift directly attacking the front shield first. I call this the main gate. If there are too many abyssal creatures at once, they can spread beyond the main gate onto the side barriers. Your guardians you've created will wait in front of the rift, ready to swiftly, or in most cases whenever they feel like it, attack the abyssal creatures. Creatures will only retaliate against guardians and go right past them if they are not attacked. Meaning your shield often gets hit a bit regardless of how many guardians you've created. If a guardian is killed, you can mine its remains to retrieve some crafted essence. Usually it's about an inventory and a half. When the main guardian's energy is charged to 60%, the rift will quake, causing all the shields to take heavy damage. This isn't able to kill the shields, but it can leave them on 1 HP. This also will increase the spawn rate of abyssal creatures from then on. The guardian can defend itself, but its attacks are very slow, and it only attacks if something passes beyond the main gates. Finally, you may be wondering what the energies are at the top left. This is your total rewards for the game. This is capped at 1200 combined energy per game. To search the rewards guardian, you need one of each reward point, both catalytic and elemental. 100 points in either is converted into one reward point. The game calls this a tuning. These points are banked. So let's say you did 700 catalytic and 200 elemental energy in a game. That would then convert to seven catalytic points and two elemental which could be used for two rewards, leaving you with five banked catalytic points. If next game you then purely did 500 elemental, you could use those five banked catalytic points for five total reward searches. Energy is tied to the type of stone you charge the main guardian with, but energy is also given from using cells. Creating guardians gives the most points, at 45 for an overcharged cell. Upgrading a barrier gives 50% as many points, but in both energy types and recharging gives 50% of upgrading in both energy types. Where you got the cell does not affect points. Creating a catalytic guardian gives catalytic energy, and elemental guardian gives elemental. Barriers simply give energy in both types. Before starting a game, I would highly recommend going to the plugin hub and downloading the Guardians of the Rift plugin. 
This provides timers on how long the altars and portals will last, as well as some other important indicators. Extremely useful. For learning, I'd recommend just hopping in some masses. World 420 is almost always full, and there are various other worlds which tend to be full as well, like World 302. Masses are much slower and worse than lower scale games, but are very simple to jump into. Before starting, I'd recommend right-clicking each of the low-level runecrafting totems and hitting Toggle. This prevents you from getting useless talismans. These let you enter an altar whenever you want. Do not toggle the fire, death, or blood altars, as these give extremely useful talismans. When you start a game, there's a two-minute warm-up period for you to collect resources and get things rolling. For the first 30 seconds, you won't be able to do anything. Use the short grace period to collect 10 uncharged cells, and head over to the East Rock Cliff and climb down and begin mining the large guardian remains when you can. These remains provide one additional essence per action than mining the regular remains, which is why you need that 56 agility so badly. I would suggest just mining here until a portal pops up at roughly 250 fragments mined. You'll see a little bubble appear in the top left UI with the portal's location. This portal will teleport you to the west cliff edge next to the huge guardian remains. These can be mined for fully crafted essence, so mine until all your pouches are full and then leave the portal. Enter the highest level available altar here. If it's within 5 seconds of changing, and you don't see an option for an overcharged cell, you can just wait to hope for something better. After this, make a guardian, if it is not capped, and start making more essence at the bench. Basically, you are just going to alternate making an inventory of essence, then crafting, and taking the portal, and mining an inventory of essence, then crafting, until the game ends. Make a guardian whenever possible. If it isn't, upgrade or charge the shields. Lower scale games are much faster and more consistent, but they require some thought and planning to not lose. Depending on how many of the rewards you have, you can hit as many as 10 game completions an hour. If you have an ult with 27 runecrafting, it can help you in the game, but it's not necessary. If you want to use one, have it wear full graceful if you have it. If you don't have that, probably just bring a stamina potion on the ult. Give your ult a full inventory of binding necklaces with some free inventory space so they can give them to you when needed. The main strategy change for small scale is maintaining the main gate's HP as much as possible by throwing weak cells into it whenever you run to an altar to craft. This keeps the shield safe from breaking. I like to call this method Gandalf Tech because we primarily guard only the main gate and we don't let anything pass it. It is very easy to lose a low scale game if you're not being careful. We only really care about that main gate because there are a smaller amount of enemies and these head directly to the main gate, attacking the other gates only if there's too many spawned at once which we prevent from happening completely. The side gates do absolutely nothing at a small scale, so don't worry about those. If you have at least two pieces of the outfit and the Colossal Pouch, you can start binding combination runes in the minigame to speed them up with my prior setup. This matters far more in small scale. If you bind combination runes in the minigame, the amount of stones you receive will be equal to the amount of runes you created. So with some multipliers going, this provides far more stones than any other altar. Jagex, please do not nerf. Anytime you enter an elemental altar, cast magic imbue, and use earth or water runes on the altar. You can check which runes are most profitable or XP depending on what you want. With the full outfit and lantern, you can get over 100 stones per full craft at an elemental altar. In a solo, this translates to ending the game in 3 crafts. Don't get greedy with this, you still need to get some catalytic energy for points. Do whatever gives you the most powerful cell in general. The strategy for a small scale game does not change from 1 to 10 players. The main thing to understand is your main shield is far more important at this scale, and getting powerful guardians up is also extremely important. When you enter, grab 10 cells and a weak cell, and head to the main gate. When the game starts, you are going to throw a cell in the main gate and run over to the large guardians. If you have more than one person, the main gate can hold 4 weak cells before it is full health, so some of you should throw cells in the side corner gates if there are more than 4 of you. If even one of you have an ult, you can simply start at the large guardians and start mining, as soon as the game starts and someone can run their ult to charge the gates repeatedly over and over, leaving right before the enemies enter the game so it has no negative effect on the scale. An ult will improve the speed of your games by about 30 seconds per game, which is a really big improvement. One ult can cover as many as 5 people. You may be wondering why I didn't suggest making any guardians with weak cells. I have found these are a great way to quickly lose games in a small scale. Because creatures only stop attacking the gate if they are attacked, and weak guardians have an extremely low max hit, they're barely going to do anything to stop the creatures and don't die quickly. Simply wasting a slot you could fill with an overcharged guardian. Mine at the guardian until you receive somewhere between 120 and 150 fragments. This is going to vary a lot depending on your rewards obtained currently. After the first three altar shifts, the portal will pop up, so we are going to take advantage of that. 
Run over to the workbench as soon as you have enough fragments and begin crafting. Make sure you watch your timer on the plugin. If you're using an alt, have him leave before the timer reaches 110. When it reaches 115, start running regardless of how much essence you have collected. This is right about when the first alters pop up. The very first alter's uptime is completely random. Sometimes it is only up as little as one tick. I've seen that a few times. So be ready to quickly run into a powerful alter. I'm really hoping they change this as it's one of the most annoying things about the minigame. Your goal is to get an overcharged cell ASAP. If there is no option for an overcharged cell, you can settle for strong. If the first two alters are medium to weak, that's pretty rare for that to happen. You can wait and pray that third alter doesn't ruin your day. If all three alter shifts are below strong, your game is pretty much lost. Hopefully they change this as well, it is also extremely annoying. You have a 1 out of 4 chance each shift to get an overcharged cell, or a 1 out of 2 chance if trying to get at least strong. So your odds are really good. Craft your essence you made and quickly make the most powerful guardian you can. Powerful guardians are far more impactful than upgrading the shield. If some of your team received medium cells, you might as well use those to upgrade the main gate, as it can only be upgraded a single tier at a time anyways, and you'll eventually need to upgrade this anyways. You need to have at least 50% of the cap in strong or overcharged guardians at the beginning to survive. In a solo, that's just a single overcharged guardian. If you manage to make the first altar, you can create a guardian, throw your stones into the main guardian, and try to hop into another overcharged altar without essence in order to get another cell. This guarantees the game will be a success because you can make two overcharged guardians at the very beginning of the game. Watch your timing carefully. You need to be in the third altar immediately as it pops up in order to make it to the portal, which should be popping up. Hit the portal. If the start of the game was proper, you should have a beefy, healthy shield with a bunch of guardians protecting it. Mine to a full inventory, and again try to get an overcharged cell. If you did not create enough guardians and charge your main gate enough, it often goes down while you are mining at the beginning here. This isn't the end if this happens, just repair it with essence you just mined and throw a weak cell in when you can. From this point, it's the same as a mass. Craft essence, runecraft, hit the portal, runecraft, repeat. Be careful when the Guardian is about to hit 60% total energy. Make sure you have a cell with you if you're going to charge him over this threshold and immediately upgrade the main gate. The game isn't lost if the gate goes down at this point, but it's going to slow your game down a lot. Upgrading instantly heals a tremendous amount of health on the gate. Don't worry about any of the side gates breaking, they really don't matter. Typically with a solid team, you end the game right after crafting with the essence from the second portal. Make sure you focus on ending the game quickly after this, as the monsters do not let up after 60% energy on the Guardian. Low scale gives similar points to masses, but end in literally half the time, providing more XP and points an hour. A major problem with small scale games are crashers. And Jagex made this even worse with their hotfix allowing people to join up to the 2 minute mark. Often someone will join your game right as you finish mining, forcing you to leave. Even though there is a peek option on the door allowing you to see if people are inside. The game is lost with a second person joining that late regardless of how good they are, as they have no shards. And typically they have no idea what they are doing, which also doesn't help. If you're using an alt, I pre-type some decent message asking people to hop like I do here. Usually people are just new, and they joined on accident, and then they just leave when you ask them. I have had so many people get extremely angry at me for this, which is simply mind-boggling. If the crasher joins and immediately starts building weak guardians, the game's over. And I've had several people do this before I can even ask them to hop. They just immediately start making guardians. What I do to prevent people from doing this in the future is after they crash me, I immediately begin hopping to find a different world on my main. And then I use my ult, and I just simply AFK in their game. This guarantees they're going to eventually lose due to scaling, and they'll waste their time without wasting yours anymore. There are unfortunately a lot of jerks and or ignorant players right now. The other benefit is you can use your ult to see when they leave, and then you can go back and use that world again. This isn't really player's fault, it's Jagex's for not adding an instance to this, or preventing joiners when there's benefit to small scale games. This will likely only get worse with my video showing how good small scale games are, although the amount of people doing the main game is also dropping with time, which is good. Until then, alt warfare is our best option, unfortunately. Crashers lower your rates quite a bit when they pop in. If you don't have an alt, I would still recommend AFKing in their game even on a main. This is the only way you're going to prevent people from continuing this behavior in the future. School of Hard Knocks. Why are we still here? Just to suffer. Every night, I can feel my leg and my arm, even my fingers. 
I'm going to go back over the rewards again here, even though I mentioned them earlier. That pouch, again, is 1 out of 300 from a search and provides a colossal pouch that holds 40 essence. The lantern is 1 out of 700 and provides a buff in the minigame depending on log type used to light it. The outfit provides a plus 60% bonus to runes crafted and can be purchased with abyssal pearls. The rewards I didn't touch on were the dyes. These can be used to color the outfit pieces except for the boots. Three dyes for the full set. These can be swapped for any different color you desire by talking to the wizard by the bank. I love the look of the blue outfit personally. These are 1 out of 1200, but there are 3 of them. So it is effectively 1 out of 400 for any die. You get 2 dies on average before purchasing the full set. There are a couple other cosmetic rewards you can receive here. There is the Tarnished Locket, which can be received from any ornate pouch pulled from a reward, which is the same as a Tipperos Casket. This can be given to the Lumberge Guide for the Amulet of the Eye. This does nothing interesting, but it looks pretty stylish. There's also the Lost Bag Cosmetic that is also from ornate pouches. This fills the cape slot and bounces when you walk or run, which is pretty cool. Although the max cape will always be the most stylish option for the cape slot. You can purchase a guardian orb from the wizard for 3,000 abyssal pearls. This might get reduced in the future, allowing you to transmog your rift guardian to look like the main guardian in the minigame. This is very cool looking, but requires a very long time to obtain. Finally, there's the pet abyssal protector, which can be pulled from the rewards guardian. We do not know the rarity of this guy, but I would assume anywhere from 1 out of 3,000 pulls to 1 out of 5,000. When we know the rate, I will update the pinned comments. The Protector is easily one of the ugliest pets in the game, in my humble opinion. Easily snagging a new slot in my F-tier slot. Some people like just how disgusting looking it is, but I am most certainly not one of those. You cannot receive the Rift Guardian during this minigame, so you will need to grind that separately if you want it. Which is now much faster to do, with the Colossal Pouch at least. Before I end the video, I want to leave a bug and issue complaint section here. I'll leave in the pinned comments if something gets fixed. Hopefully this drums up some attention so we can get these things worked on. My main complaint right now is crashers for small scale games. A decent band-aid solution would be warning joiners that there are very few people in the game. This would probably help, but often people just spacebar through warnings, so maybe not that much. I seriously would suggest Jagex revert the late joining fix and only allow people to join in the first 30 seconds. This would almost entirely fix the problem. Adding instances would also fix this problem, but Jagex have said they can't because you go to the actual runecrafting altars. Maybe they could add a private option on the gate that creates its own instance that takes you to altars that are also within the instance. I don't know if that's feasible or not, that's just my suggestion. Another semi-annoying problem is the cap on guardians preventing crafts. They already allowed you to throw cells in full HP shields, so why not allow us to create guardians past the cap just for points? Another major bug, which I've only run into a few times, is stones not doing anything when used on the Guardian, but they get used up. They provide no XP or points, and they don't charge the Guardian. This has caused me to lose a solo before, which I am very much so not a fan of. This might have been fixed, I'm not sure. The pathing on the created Guardians can also be incredibly bad. Sometimes they just walk in circles and do nothing. Sometimes they just ignore monsters when they are right next to them. This can cause your shield to take heavy damage when it should be taking none. I also absolutely despise the random altar timer on the first altar transition. This should not be able to be one tick. It heavily lowers your chance of getting a good altar. I also think they should make at least a strong altar guaranteed every shift, as there is a small chance you just lose the game at the beginning, which is annoying. Portal placement can also be very annoying RNG. South is incredibly easy to reach at all times. North is incredibly difficult to reach. I prefer they just remove that north spawn personally. Check the pinned comments for updates on bug fixes and changes. And that's about it for the video. Leave a like if you liked it and or subscribe. Thanks guys.